This episode is brought to you by CBD TV, your one-stop shop for all your CBD needs. Use code FRESHOUT to get 15% off your next order. What's up, everybody? Big Herc916 getting down fresh out, and you tuned in to another dope interview. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that alarm, so that way you get alerted every time we drop a new video. Man, you know, we've been out here grinding, and we've been fortunate enough to have Matt Cox visit with us and tell his story. Now, this guy's got a hell of a story. Uh, this guy's an ex-con man. He was putting down some moves out there, but I'm not going to tell the story. I'm going to let him tell it. So Matt, tell the people a little bit about where you're from and how you grew up. Um, I'm from, uh, I'm from Tampa, Florida. I grew up in a, a, a town called, uh, Temple Terrace, which is, it's, it's a, it's a city. It's basically like a suburb of Tampa. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, was raised middle class and, uh, went to uh, schools for kids with learning disabilities, and eventually I got a. I eventually went to U.S. Or University of South Florida, and I got a degree in fine arts, and uh, ended up working at a, a a mortgage company, and then okay. I started my own mortgage company. And so, um, after you start your own mortgage company, what uh, led to your initial uh, involvement in in the hustle? You know, um, I would say, you know, honestly. The, the reason, you know, I actually had graduated college and I was working construction and I was just barely making ends meet. Uh, and only because, you know, I had a learning disability, so I would try to become an insurance adjuster. That didn't work out. I, I couldn't keep up with the workload. Eventually, my, the girl I was dating at the time was like, you've got to do this. You'd be great at this. So I, I ended up starting, I ended up working at a, uh, at a mortgage company and then I end up opening my own mortgage company because I was very good at it. Mm -hmm. But the very first mortgage I ever did had fraud in it. Very first mortgage, I had this bar borrower. I came to my more, my um, my manager, gave her the file. She opened the file. She looked through the whole thing and took one piece of paper and set it to the side. And she's like, "It's perfect." She goes, "Except your borrower was thirty days late on her rent in the last year." And I went, "And that that's a deal killer." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh man!" And she, I go, "What do I do?" And she said, "White it out." Make a copy. We'll stick it back in the file. Uh, in the file, she has underwriting. Will underwriter the underwriting will never catch it. So the underwriter will never catch it. It'll be fine. You'll close. And I was like, Are you sure? And she, I go, That's fraud. And she goes, It's not a big deal. Just do it. She goes, Or she goes, Don't do it. So, so I mean, I actually hadn't made a car payment in a couple months. She goes, She's like, Ford Motor Car is not looking for my <laughs> yeah, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. She goes, Do what you want to do. I was like, Fuck. So I went and I grabbed it, made the copy, put it in sweated for about four or five days, loan closes. I get a check for like 3,500 bucks, was thrilled. Next guy that comes in, he only made 45,000. So he didn't debt, what's called debt to income ratio. He didn't make enough money. Mm. But if he made 55,000, he could get in that house and I could get another $3,500 check. So <laughs> boom, waited about four or five days, loan <laughs> closes, boom, $3,500. Yeah. Within, I mean, the first month I closed like four loans. The next month it was six. Then it was eight. Then it was ten. Then they made a ma made me a manager. Then they gave me the, my own office. And then I ended up eventually leaving there and starting my own mortgage company. And I'd say maybe 70, 80 percent of the loans that went through there became an FHA lender. So qualified to become an FHA lender. Mm. Became a, a subprime lender, non or conventional lender, and VA. Uh, and, and so we started lending out money and, and just basically I used to joke all the time, if, if you had a pulse and you came through my doors, you were getting a loan. If I could do it, you could, you, you don't have a job. I got you. Now, you don't have this. I got you. Put that into perspective because I know some people in real estate and, and, you know, I know uh, a few people who do loans also. And, and I, and I, I'm out here in LA and I see the game. How many people are actually, you think even today getting down like that, who just haven't got caught? Oh, it's, it's 
a ton of them. And you know, it's funny. I was reading the comments and stuff. They're all guys are always like, "Oh, you can't do that now. You can't stop it. Stop it." You it's think still I don't? Going, yeah. You think I don't know a bunch of realtors and mortgage brokers and t- title fraud is easier to do now than it ever was. Like literally, you don't even need a new, do- an actual, uh, an original document. You can write one up and scan it and put original document and send it to public records and they record oh, it as an original. You're right, you're right. And it's, 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 it's kind of funny you said that because I had a, a, a meta guy and he was in there for that and he was getting titles from properties in Bakersfield and basically finding out the records, getting, uh, he was getting loans against these properties right. and then turn around and, and, and getting, you know, 30, 40,000 and the people get a letter and you're behind in payment. They're like, I've never even took out a loan on this property right. and they never knew. And this guy would ride around. He had a, he pretended to be Sidney Portier's son and he would go to places and, and basically, you know, not pay for food and stuff. I mean, dude, he was, but if you look the part, nobody questions it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's confidence. It's, uh, I was, anyway, I always joke around that, you know, because what happened was obviously, like, I don't know how long we, you want me to, I can tell the whole story in five minutes. I can tell it in 10. I can tell it in two hours. Well, what, what, uh, as you, you know, got to making your move, what, eventually led to you getting caught up? Well, the first time, so what happens is I start, basically for three or four years, I own this mortgage company. I got like a dozen guys working for me and they're mortgage brokers. About 80% of the loans going through the, the company are fraud. And, and, and so I think the, more, the, the, the FBI said it was like 40 million in fraud or something like that. They said it was between like 40 to 60 million in fraud. You know, they were throwing, you know, they throw yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, they're doing an estimate. But so what ended up happening was a broker that used to work for me, she had gone and started her own company. She had run what's called a straw man scam where she got a bunch of loans for a guy and then or a couple of guys and they didn't pay. They pulled out cash. They didn't even make the first payment. Mm. Whole thing. So now the, the bank knows something's wrong. Right you didn't the make top. the first yeah, payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called the first payment yeah. defraud. They, they immediately investigate. Mm. Had they made two or three payments and let it get sold, they'd have been fine. But they didn't make the first payment. They pulled out half a million dollars. FBI comes in and says, look, this is clearly fraud. They go to her. She gets grabbed. Uh, she and her husband, who had opened the mortgage company, they get grabbed. And you know they're going to end up doing a couple years. And so they wear a wire on me. Mm. Uh, the, there we go. Yeah, at the time, um, so they invite me to lunch. And I know they're being investigated. And they say, look, this is what happened. Well, I had closed several loans at their company because I couldn't close loans in my own name um, or sell houses because it's a conflict of interest. So I have you do it. So they did it. So they had all my paperwork. And they were like, look, they're asking this. They're asking that. I'm like, oh, my God, you didn't tell them the W-2s are fake. You didn't tell them this. Did you tell them about I mean, I just bury myself. So. And in the middle of, the, of that conversation, mm. I know, I realized it. That they're uh, hot. Yeah, as soon as I, I'm, I'm oh. sitting there, I was like, oh, man. And, and so I was like, man, I hope you're getting something for this. And she goes, Matt, she starts crying. She says, we don't have to go to jail. And I went, I said, I understand. That's fine. Oh. I get up and leave. You know, I know I'm done. I get up and I leave. FBI officer calls me. Hey, uh, I mean, he didn't, they don't even pretend. He didn't <laughs> yeah, even pretend. Yeah, 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 they already know. He's like, hey, uh, Mr. Cox. Scott Gale. I still remember his name. He, this is Agent Scott Gale, uh, FBI. I need to schedule a time for you to come in and discuss. Uh, you know, and I was like, "Let me get a lawyer. I got to get a lawyer. Let me I'll have my lawyer call you." So he calls, and I work out a, a plea deal because uh, they had me on like half a million in fraud, but the loans had actually been sold, and and it was a whole flipping thing I was doing just on the side. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up getting three years probation because there was no dollar loss. So mm-hmm. I get three years paper. And, but I can't run the mortgage company. So a smart person, sorry, a, a smart person would have said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find another career. I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna claim bankruptcy on all my debt. I'm gonna move into my parents' spare room. I'm gonna start over. I'm a smart guy. I can find something else to do. A narcissist, arrogant prick that I am says, I'm taking it up a notch. You know what? Now you, you made me, I'm a felon. Like, it's all their fault. I didn't do it. It's not me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm blaming everybody else. Oh, well, if the government's going to make me a felon, then I'm going to start, you know, fucking stupid. Just, just, I look back and I think, I wish I'd just been there to just punch myself. And so what I did was, because of the knowledge that I had accrued over several years, I decided I was going to go ahead and start running a much larger scam. Instead of some, you know, change a number here and a number there, now I'm going all in. And I decide I'm going to start making fake people. 
synthetic identities, they call them now. Mm. So I start making synthetic identities. I figure out how to get social security to issue me social security numbers to children that don't exist. And then I take those social security cards or those numbers and I get secured credit cards in their name. And then I make the payments. And then after about six months, they have suddenly you have these synthetic identities that actually have like 700 credit scores. I then go out and I buy houses in an area of Ebor, uh, Tampa, which is called Ebor City. Horrible area. Houses were going for about 50, 60 grand. Mm. So I go out and I bu start buying just crack houses for 40, 50 grand. Cheap. But I record the value of those houses at 200,000. So 190, 200, 210. So in public records, if you buy three or four of them, it looks like you bought, you bought the house for 200,000. So if I ask an appraiser to come out and look at the house, even though I, cl I clean it up, and he goes, you know, the house is in a horrible neighborhood, but did you know there's a comparable sale two blocks away? And did you know there's another house over here that sold for 200,000 and another one over here that sold for 200,000? I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. So I go, so what's the value of the house? He goes, it's, it's gonna be worth about 200,000. What'd you pay for it? I go, 200,000. He gives, so each one of my fake people, mm. each one of my fake people, I, one, I named them all Quentin Tarantino, okay? You, Reservoir Dogs, you seen <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah. Okay, I name them uh, Michael White, Lee Black, um, uh, I got William Blue, I've got James Red, I got Brandon Green. These, these are the names that all these houses are in. So this guy, uh, James Red, has four houses, five houses in his name. Damn. Mr. Green has five or six houses in his name. And I obviously, I get the money by going to hard money lenders. And a lot of those guys are all wrapped up in the whole thing. The point is, is that I drove the area market from 50000 up to about two fifty, And that allowed me to then, I buy a house for 40000 or 50000 I get it recorded at two hundred. I get an appraisal for two hundred. I go to the bank. The bank lends me 90%. They lend me $180,000 on that house. I pull out the money, I make a couple payments, the house is going to foreclosure. The bank thinks, they think, well, we lent money on a house and, and we, it, the house isn't worth it and we lost $120,000, $110,000 and that happens. So they don't even know a fraud's been committed. Because you made the payments. I made a few payments mm -hmm. and let it go into foreclosure, but let's face it, if you bought a house for $200,000, made a few payments and the house went into foreclosure, is that fraud? It's not fraud. You lost your job, you were in a car accident, mm -hmm. you, Something happened. It happened. So the bank would send out some collection agents. They would look. They would make some phone calls. I would say that the person, I'd have the, my fake borrower's sis, sister send a letter saying, look, he was in a car accident. I'd send a copy of a, of a local newspaper article on like a 10-car pile up. He was life flighted to Tampa General. He'll never work again. Foreclose on the house. They foreclose on all the properties. They just want a reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they foreclose on the property, they sell them, they, make, they lose $100,000, $140,000, and I just kept going. I did that for about two years. I got $11.5 million uh, out of that. Now, I have a buddy that was running a scam in Orlando. That I'm simplifying this, but he and another person were running a, a, another scam that I was helping them with, absolutely helping them with it. And uh, this is a friend of mine that I grew up with that was, we were best friends. Mm -hmm. uh, he ends up getting caught in a bank and they grab him and he cooperates and says, look, I know you got me for this, but I know a guy who's running a scam. It's not hard to figure out. Look up black, red, green, oh, wow. blue. So it's pretty obvious. Yeah. They, put it together. they put together a task force. They start investigating me. Maybe three, four months later, and I'm on federal probation. Three, four months later, a friend of mine who's a sheriff's deputy that I lent did about a million dollars worth of mortgages for him, all, all fraud. I've done fraudulent mortgages for police officers. <laughs> for everybody getting every, yeah, yeah. Lawyers, I mean, some, you know, doctors, they'd be shocked yeah. at me. Fraud, and they know it's fraud. Yeah, but like you said, they, hey, can you get me in? Yeah, well, and this is the thing. Just because it's a fraudulent loan doesn't mean you don't pay. Like, he, these guys are yeah, paying. Yeah. They shouldn't have been given the money, but they are paying. But the bottom line is, like you said, if you're making a payment, so most of the people, if they can get in and I don't default, then where's the harm? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And... To a degree, because that's what I, I, I and I, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's still fraud. There's just no harm. So you're absolutely right. There's no harm, but it's fraud. It's illegal, and you know, I, it's it's fraud. Like you know, the FBI ain't looking at it like that. Yeah, yeah. they're gonna charge you because the first time when I got in trouble, no money. There was no dollar loss. There was no dollar now, loss. Now are they, they charge me? Now the people that 
made the payments that didn't actually default, even though they maybe fraudulated some information, what's the harm in their, I mean, what's the charge on them? I mean, it would still be bank fraud. But on their part for, for falsifying documents as far as you're the lying income. To Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, it, so they end up with maybe a felon, you get probation, which is why I was on probation. Okay. There was no dollar loss. Okay. I'd lied on an application. So what ends up happening is this sheriff's deputy shows up and he says, listen, I want to let you know there's a task force that was put together with you. It was just handed to the FBI. He used to date the police officer, one of the police officers that was on the task force. He's like, she told me this morning. Wow. Because his name had come up. Yeah. He goes, because my name came up in connection with you. He goes, they're coming to arrest you probably in a couple of days. And I was like, whoa. So I thought to myself, I remember thinking, well, I, I mean, I can't go to prison. I mean, look at me. I'm adorable. I mean, it's not going to work out with me, with, work out well. I've seen Shawshank. It's bad, bro. <laughs> I mean, all I've seen is these horrible movies. Yeah. I saw a movie called The Animal Factory. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've never seen it. Oh, bro, it was... It was horrible. I mean, basically, it was it was like it was a pen type movie. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what a camp was. I didn't know what a, a low was. I didn't know the difference between federal and state. No, I didn't. I didn't know any of that. In my, you know, I just thought they were all pens, and you get there and you're done. And I'm going to be dealing with someone like, like Wes, uh, Watson. Or, you know, I can't deal with that guy. He's a he's. He's a monster. He's, he's, he's my worst fucking nightmare in federal prison. He's showing up and that guy says, go do this, go do that. Oh, so, you know, it's, it would be all bad. So I can't go. So I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I can't do this. He goes, what do you, so my buddy goes, what are you going to do? I go, I'm leaving. I'm fucking hauling ass, man. I can't go to prison. So, you know, clearly I'm not like most of the, of the guests. On, on the show. I mean, these are all guys. And a lot of, uh, to be honest, a lot of people put extras on it. So don't take all that for face right. value. Yeah, oh, no. I mean, you know, the point is I take off. I, I, I had no, I always get flack for saying this. I, was, I had no money. Like, yeah, I had, we had a couple million dollars in the bank, but you can't get a couple million dollars in the bank, out of the bank in two or three days. Mm. Literally, it was like a Thursday. So I had two days. I got out 80000 in cash and I take off on the run with this crazy chick that I've been dating maybe a month. I mean, I look back and I think about all the bad decisions. I don't even know this girl. Mm. So we take off, we go on the run. I don't have much money. We go straight to Atlanta. We rent a house from someone. I satisfy the loan on the house and I assume this guy's identity, make a fake ID, and I open a couple bank accounts. I borrow three loans on his house at the same time. So I actually went downtown and forged a document and put it into public records saying that he had a, he had a loan on his house for like, let's say 200,000 mm -hmm. on a 200,000 dollars house saying he owed 200,000 to Bank of America. Well, I can't borrow if he's got a lien on the property, a loan on the property. So I file a satisfaction of mortgage on the property from Bank of America. I forged the document. I put it into public records. They record it thinking it's Bank of America. Mm. They then mail the document back to me because I put a different address on. There's thousands of Bank of Americas. They don't know which one lends mm -hmm. the money. So now when you go to check public records, it looks like he owns the house free and clear, but I'm him. I have his ID. And I've got an alternative social security number. So if you pull his credit, there's no credit. So I go to three different hard money lenders and I tell all of them, hey, I want you to lend me money on this house. Will you lend me 150000 on the house? The guy goes, sure, no problem. So I have all three of them come out within a day of each other. They all approve the loan. It's a hard money lender. They lend 65% of the value of the house. So they lend basically $150,000 on the house. And I then go to... What kind of interest is on that loan? Oh, it's ridiculous, like 12 and a half, 14%. But I'm not really picky about it since I'll never make a payment. Mm -hmm. So I close on the loan. I get the money. I put the money in the bank accounts. I close on all three loans within about a day of each other. So it's, it's, it happens too fast for public records or the title company to actually catch that I'm getting multiple mortgages because I go to mm. different title companies. They're all going to mail the documents in. And public records is just going to record it. They don't check. They don't say, hey, there's already a mortgage here. That's not how it works. You can have four mortgages on your house. They record one, they record another, they record another. Well, no big deal. This is some woman who makes 12 bucks an hour working at public records. She doesn't care. She's mm -hmm. not checking anything. She's not making calls. So, of course, I put the money in the bank. Money clears. I pull the money out. About a little over $400,000. 
and I throw it in a duffel bag, and then I go to South Carolina, or I go to North Carolina, rent a place there. Now, how long does it take you to get that four hundred thousand? Um, it was about a month. So a month in Atlanta, you got four hundred k. Yeah, pulled it out. You know, nine thousand, seven thousand, okay. eight thousand. Okay. Back then, there was no Bitcoin. Like I didn't know then. Like oh, now, yeah, I went yeah, to yeah. I went. You know, you know Crypto, I went to yeah. college. You yeah. know, for twelve and a half years in prison. So now I'm like, God, I could have done this. I could have done that. I could have done this. You know. So all I knew was get it out in cash. Stay mm-hmm. under ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I start pulling out the money. I actually only had one time I got out a check for twenty nine thousand. That's a whole story, but anyway, I did get the twenty nine thousand. But the the guy, the bank officer, knew something was wrong the whole time. He knew something was wrong. He still ended up having to give me the money uh, because it's my money. Well, it looks like my money. So I then go to North Carolina, get a place. Go to South Carolina, buy a couple of houses, get some get people to owner finance their houses, satisfy the loans on the houses, borrow one point three million dollars on those houses. I then start pulling out money out of those houses. So I end up pulling out money. I'll give you the short version because I know. You know mm-hmm. Um, I pull out a bunch of money. I get caught in a bank. At one point, they discovered Wachovia. Remember Wachovia Bank? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wachovia's yeah. fraud department uh, figured out what I was doing. They, they stumbled onto it. They got me. They have the police grab me, put me in handcuffs, and I convinced the police officer, the deputy, the deputy, sorry, the detective, I convinced him that there's a problem at the bank. The bank officers may have done something wrong. I certainly didn't. I'm a guy named Gary Sullivan. I work for Labor on Demand. I have a business card. I've got, and keep in mind, I'm, all my driver's licenses issued by the Department of Banking. I'm sorry. All my driver's licenses are issued by the, um, by the DMV. Mm-hmm. I have passports issued by the State Department. I mean, I've figured out how to, how to steal your identity and get the DMV to give me a driver's license in your name. A legit one. A legit one. So wow. if I, I got like probably six or seven different tickets while I was on the run. I went to traffic school as someone else while I was on the run. Because I got so many tickets, I was gonna lose his license. I got an apartment, a car in this guy's name. I can't lose his license. Yeah, that's a good profile. So I, uh, I convinced the detective that I haven't done anything wrong. There's a problem with the bank. Talked to the bank loan officers. I came in, I told them I wanted to borrow this money. They set everything up. I wouldn't know how to do fraud. And so the guy actually, I actually argued between him and the fraud department guy with Wachovia and convince the detective that I'm right and Wachovia has made a mistake and he lets me go. So I take off. Then I almost get caught. I get into a huge argument with the chick that I'm with. I ditch her. She gives me like a hundred grand. She, she keeps like five, five, six hundred thousand dollars in cash. I take, Damn. Like, I take like a hundred grand mm-hmm. because she had an argument and her argument was that, look, you're gonna, you know, okay, fine. We're breaking up and you're ditching me. That's fine. But you can go on and keep doing this. I can't. I have to live off this money. And so I was like, yeah, all right, here, keep the money. I took a hundred grand. I went to, went to, I actually called the FBI agent, by the way, um, but called the female, the FBI agent looking for me. At this point, Secret Service is looking for me. FBI is looking for me. U.S. Marshals are looking for me. I'm number one on the Secret Service's most wanted list. And I almost get caught by the U.S. Marshals. That's another thing. Uh, but I eventually, I eventually, I end up going to, to, um, Nashville, I start flipping houses in Nashville, buying houses and rent, pulling money out. Are you the same profile you were using previously? Or you oh, changed no. that up already? Oh, that's, yeah. I've already changed. By this point, I've changed it four or five times. Okay, okay. I've had 27, I want to say 26 or 27 driver's licenses issued by seven different states. Damn. And I've had almost, I would say, I usually say two dozen passports. It's really about 20, uh, 20 passports. And keep in mind, I've also, while on the run, we went to Jamaica, Bermuda, um, uh, Mexico, Croatia, Greece, and Italy. All, wow. on, all on fake passports. Had, listen, had a nose job, had a facelift, a facelift liposuction, had my teeth done, two hair transplants. Listen, I wasn't going to prison. That wasn't in the cards. I was doing everything I could to not get caught. And then I end up going to Nashville. I meet this chick, I'm pulling out money. I ended up getting like three and a half million in Nashville. So at this point, it's like $15 million that I'm personally responsible for. Um, The mortgage company, they're saying between like 40 to 60 million. But I don't feel like that's my fault. Anyway, so it's like 15 million. And at that point, my girlfriend and I are living, this other chick and I are living together. She finds out my name. She ends up telling us, we're also sleeping with another girl. She ends up telling that girl who I am. Your real name. Yeah. 
but my real name. Because what happened was Dateline NBC was about to do a program on me. And so for the first time, like there'd been, I'd been in, I'd been in, you know, um, Bloom, uh, was it, uh, Bloomberg? Bloomberg, Bloomberg yeah, yeah, yeah. Business Week. I'd been in, uh, on uh, Fortune Magazine did an article. There had been probably 40 or 50 articles in different newspapers, Chicago Tribune, Tampa Tribune, St. Pete Times. So I, but those are, you know, the, how's that going to catch up with you? It's not like national. And so to me, and it's just a news, it's just a, a it's just a, a magazine, mm -hmm. but this was Dateline. This is going to be a one hour special. Nationwide, wasn't a local periodical. Yeah. And anybody, tons of people watch it. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm done. I got to get out of here. Okay. Um, so I'm done. I got to get out of here. And she, my girl tells the other girl who I am and that I'm leaving. And she calls the Secret Service and she turns me in for, I think, a $10,000 reward. And so, you know, so they grab me. That's not, you know, that's a bad day. It's a bad day. So they, they, I pull up one day and they jump out and, you know, get on the ground, get on the ground. They scream and I'm like, fuck. And I get on the ground and they pick me up and that's it. I'm done. I'm hit. And then I go to federal prison or, you know, the marshals move, take me, you know, whatever, take a couple weeks to get me to Atlanta. They consolidate all my cases and um, I'm, I'm hit. I'm done. It's over. And I'm 100% guilty. I can't go to trial. Mm. So it's like, take a plea. Hope for the best. It's all you can do.